All right, thank you for tuning in. This is yours truly, Bishop Dr. Solomon Butler, Ph.D. Ph.D. H.D.D. H.D.D. stands for Honorary Doctor of Divinity. Th.D. stands for a Theological Doctors, and the Ph.D. is a Ph.D. in Education. We have a powerful anointed naturopath doctor, world renowned and loves God with us tonight. And her name is Dr. Felicia Hill. And whatever type of sickness or ailment you have a question about, she's going to give the spiritual remedy according to the Bible where Luke 9 1 Jesus brought his disciples together and said I have given you the power to cure disease that's what Jesus said FDA Luke 9 1 I didn't say it. Jesus said that and I work for him and I'm just repeating what he said but she has something that can help our people also it is an honor I have minister pastor Coleman Roland Coleman uh, who was my supervisor at the school where I, I graduated from. He said, look, in high school, we worked together. I was a teacher. He was my principal, one of the most powerful principals in this area. He's retired now, and we're also doing a collaboration of business together at my church. Then I have my, I'm Jonathan, and he's David. Well, I'll be David. <laughs> David had all the problems. But <laughs> I have here tonight... Dr. J. Qualls, PhD, THD, powerful man of God, one of the most powerful preachers. He's not scared to say what's in the Bible, and then he get quiet to see what you gonna say. <laughs> so he teaches on uh, Facebook, and he's, every time I hear him, I can hear the fire God come from him. He's here tonight as a guest. Both have been on my show, but I had to get them here to hear this powerful lady of God. Now let me throw this out here before we get started because I'm going to let her go in a few minutes. If you're looking for a church home where a pastor is not scared to tell you the truth, he's not scared to talk about homosexuality, which God and I both were against. He's not scared to tell you that if you fornicate, you're going to hell. You got to get delivered. He's not scared to tell you if you're a witch, you need to get delivered or you're going to burn like bacon. That's sound doctrine. That's not playing with folk. Call it the way it is. This is why my TV show is sound doctrine. He said it will come a time, doctor, when they won't listen. They'll have itching ears. They don't want to hear the truth. And that's when I teach the truth. Not only do I teach the truth, uh, Supervisor Coleman, I live what I talk about. I don't play with God. I can play with Pac-Man or something else besides playing with God. <laughs> so I want you to know that this... Some of the information you're going to hear tonight is very powerful. And my producer, my TV producer, also helped me with my motion picture that's going to now call Revelation, is Mr. Lawrence Duncan, who is my producer. And God is working in that area to get the motion picture out we were talking about earlier. I also have books out. I also have videos out. I also work with a real estate company. You want to sell your house, I can sell it tomorrow. I'll write you a check for your house, even if you owe loan. If you have a car. I'll write you a check for your car. I can sell it tomorrow, even if you got a note on it. Am I telling the truth? What did I just do for you? Help me sell my car. Is it gone? It's gone. You got the check? I got the check. I can sell your car quick as you think. If Bro Coleman came, Pastor Coleman came to me and said, Hey, Butler, I got a truck here. I want to get rid of it. I'm going to make a couple of calls. I'm going to take them down there. They're going to tell him. He's going to say, Yeah, I want it. He's going to cut him a check. Give the title, he go home happy. Is that good news? That's good news. There are two things that I told God I want him to bless me with. Help me with, help people with cars and help me help people with homes. And he's doing that. Also, I am the presiding bishop of Anointed Fellowship, which she's a board member. Ronald's a board member. And uh, Pastor uh, Dr. Quarles is a board member of Anointed Fellowship, where in the summertime we take the people, I mean, in wintertime we take them off the street. Let them stay at the church, we feed them dinner, and in the morning we feed them breakfast, and then we give them clothes, they go, they come back. Two days, Friday and Saturday, we do that. And we try, on every 16th of the month, we give our clothes and food to whoever needs it. 
That's anointed fellowship. We do not, listen to this, listen to this pastor. I ain't concerned about money because I got businesses. I'm going to get that. We do not take no money for anointed fellowship. If you like to make a check out, make it out to Union for Gospel. We don't, God said don't take no money. I ain't about, it's not about money. It's about doing, I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked, you clothed me. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. That's what Jesus told us to do in Matthew 25, 36. I believe in that. So that's why we have anointed fellowship on the presiding bishop. We have a lot of churches that's involved and I have two board members here and a board member. The other thing we do is positive youth turnaround where we have children own their own business and learn how to will. They learn how to cut grass. They learn how to say, I, I had a young man come up to me from home and go, hey, real, oh, boy, you had a nice little season. <laughs> give me a couple of dollars. I said, no, here, take this broom and sweep my car. I can give you something. I can give you. You don't work for mine. The Bible says a man don't work, he don't eat. <laughs> you got to work for mine. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people are misled. Even when Paul, they went to heal the man, he said, silver and gold, I have none. He asked for arms, but God gave him legs. Lord, have mercy, shut up, mm. So I just wanted to let y'all know that we're doing a lot of things in the community. My mentor, multi-millionaire, Mr. Courtney Hoffman, I just want to give a shout out to him. We prayed four or five years ago that he would get that position. Now he's a city councilman, and man, they're really doing a lot of work that he wanted to get done. And, and uh, Mr. Courtney Hoffman, multi-millionaire, who is my supervisor, I work on the side with him too. Uh, we thank you for being in the city uh, uh, council position. All right, time to, get start. time to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna open up with, if I had diabetes mm -hmm. and high blood pressure, what, ma'am, what could you do to some things of your natural products and stuff, what could I take to help me do a little better? Well, first of all, um that is something that is um, man-made named. Okay. Um, um, of course, we're not supposed to be um, assigning our mental and our spirit in agreement with accepting a dis-ease given to us by men. Um, we were supposed to be treating the body of Christ, your temple, as the temple of the Holy okay. Spirit, meaning yes, that unfortunately we hadn't learned how to uh, eat from the earth the way the Bible instructed us to and so we are suffering from the lack of knowledge in that area um, now that we have processed food so all that is is us taking in the unclean meat and too much of it uh, and not exercising prayer and um, being thankful and the proper way of preparing the meat that's causing toxicity, constipation in the blood vessels, right. causing our bodies, seeing that God had made it. Um, he stated he beautifully and marvelously made us. And if you look at the term marvelous, then that's a wonder. And um, it's one of the reasons why even now mankind is still doing much research to try to figure out all the ins and the outs of the body. And so I don't prescribe to um, us receiving or being not diagnosed with an ailment um, that we have just brought upon ourselves due to the lack of knowledge on how to treat God's temple first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And so you're asking me, um, what can we do to cleanse God's temple? Then there's many things that God has given us here on earth that's still here waiting on for us to receive it and that is fasting okay we can do that for seven days okay and there are many different kinds of fasts you can do intermittent fasting meaning one meal a day or you can do three day fast with only water and lemonade if the body is not too acidic and that will cleanse the liver, mm. it will cleanse the kidneys, and it mm. will allow the blood vessels to open up to allow the nutritional food, such as your fruits, such as your green leafy vegetables, 
after chewing it properly to be able to pass through the kidneys and the liver in order to allow the body to not to have to experience shock from having a glucose imbalancement. I don't know if that was a little bit too much. <laughs> Oh, oh, this sound. But, Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> it's just constipation from toxicity and toxic meat and artificial foods that's clotting the blood vessels, that's not allowing oxygen, water, and nutrition to flow properly. And so, just like with a car, you put, if you don't change the order, what happens? We look at the body and we look at the motor. But we not often, and I think you all tell women this all the time, women are horrible about changing the oil in our car. We're known for that, correct? Right. Men are more likely, more likely, because maybe because you all are the original makers of the vehicles. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> more men mechanics than there are women. Right. We're the ones that tend to forget about the oil change. And what happens through that oil vessel, just like the little thin vessels uh -huh. throughout the body, yeah. when that's not flush, and when new oil is not placed in it, for us that would be nutrients from your high antioxidant fruits and vegetations, what we call superfoods, garlic, onion, mm -hmm, ginger, turmeric, when we don't apply those to the way we live and eat, Notice I didn't say diet, but how we live and eat, then now we suffer constipation in the blood vessels. So that's why we ate our salt and garlic and the onions and the apples and all shit. Yeah, grandmama there was doing the right thing. Uh -huh. That's why they outlived us to this day. Okay. That's why for the most part they outlived us because they at least had that as part of their way of eating. They made it a lifestyle. Now, Dr. Doctor Hill, I want to ask the question about, I heard you said something about in Genesis what the Lord was talking about the herbs and what we're supposed to be eating. And talk a little bit about that. That is just as plain as it stated. We were supposed to eat from the herbs. Why else are we um, dealing with the battle of Monsanto and all of these major corporations now that's pretty much what we call raping the land. Mm. Has Satan or wicked ones ever been known to take and rob a land of anything that wasn't good? Oh, yeah, he came to kill, steal, and destroy. Say John 10 10. Well, that's what's happening. Okay. And so we have to be aware. He wouldn't have us to be ignorant of what's going on. It's all out here now. We have a, we're of the informational age now. We are without an excuse now. He said that he would allow Satan to tell off on himself, or as some would say, evil ones to tell off on himself, and now they're showing their hand, and we must prepare. They are coming after us to kill, steal, and to destroy, and we use the term to depopulate. Hmm. And that's exactly what they're doing. Well, I'm glad that we ate, I tried to pay for it. You said, no, I want to plant a seed, and that's why you're so blessed, and I'm glad that y'all Oh, I feel you don't. I'm glad that you Holy Ghost feel because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 5 and 11 not to eat with a witch or a fornicator. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you saved and sanctified so I could eat with you because you're not a fornicator. Mm -hmm. Not one time the years I've known her we ever said anything out of the way to each other because it was Holy Ghost feel. Mm -hmm. And I thought, yes, I was talking to you. You ain't supposed to be eating with no fornicator because they might put something in your drink. Bill, I ain't gonna say the rest, but I'm just saying. <laughs> you don't suppose to eat with a fornicator because if you go to sleep, they might put something in your drink and then you wake up and then uh, nine months later, <laughs> because you didn't pay attention to the Bible. Turn to it, First Corinthians. First Corinthians 5 and 11. Do not eat with a fornicator or a witch or somebody that's doing sorcery because you never know. Put now we have guests, we have powerful guests. We'd like to hear from Brother Coleman and uh, uh, Dr. Q. Uh, at this time, we want to hear from you all on what y'all think about we just see. Don't you both jump in the water at the same time. I know the, I know our bodies are very toxic, much toxicity within the body. 
Uh, and I know probably the medicine that we are given work more effectively when the toxicity is reduced of uh, course, or, or let me put it another way it's all that is medicine that we are taking I know some of it is necessary but our bodies are filled with so much toxicity until it affects the effectiveness of the medicine so to, to detoxify the body can you go in depth of what we can drink, what we can eat, because this processed food is not getting it. And I think um, Russia is outlawing top uh, processed food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, first and foremost, unfortunately, um, the pharmaceutical that we now have that our grand uh, that maybe your great grandparents didn't have to worry about because um the last i checked the, with the research that i've done is that the first grocery store wasn't developed until 1960. do the math mm. it's not too long ago our people were eating from the earth Mm. And if you do just a little bit of research, just a little bit, God didn't allow them to hide it from us. You can see the decline of the health once we started to take in come through the 60s and the 70s. And there is a book uh, with a, a very highly intelligent black woman by the name of Frances Whale. She was a psychiatrist and she worked with the uh, medical association she got to the highest rank that she could uh, she wrote a book about the ISIS called the ISIS book she breaks down from that field exactly when they started to introduce and use us as guinea pigs to experiment on after desensitizing after stripping the healing medicine meaning where where there used to be a time where cannabis was in a liquid form and if you just go and do a little research you'll see that it was but somewhere between that time in the 60s and 70s all of a sudden now it got outlawed and it became illegal to use it now look at what we are now again mm -hmm. it's legal again and unfortunately it's not the same healing strand of the cannabis plant that it used to be before they outlawed it back in the 60s and 70s everyone was walking around playing around walking doing everything that we could but our men were as strong as they could ever be even on drugs even on induced uh, chemicals and heroin and crack cocaine we were still able-bodied to do a lot of things now the one we got to ask the question just to use a little common sense that's not so common anymore what was the difference between the drugs back then that the doctors was prescribing just as early as in the 50s and the 60s and the early part of the 70s versus now where we have where you can just go across the river to st louis the south and north and you see our people going blown out of their minds. By the way, I am also a certified drug counselor as well. And so, the only thing we can pinpoint that's down in black and white is that they have increased the chemicals, the artificial chemicals in the drugs, not to mention the homemade ones that's been made inside of certain complex buildings and homes and housing with low income people. And some that are in the higher caliber, there is an increase of us in taking these things and it's causing more of a strong addiction mm -hmm. than ever before. Mm -hmm. And so the way you do that is that yes, the body has to go into a form of rehab. 
rehabilitation, the same as you would do, a carpenter would do when he's stripping a home. And he's saying, let's gut this house out. That does not mean that it won't be anything from the original home left. You're not going to take the foundation out. Right. You're not going to take the wound out. You're not going to take your legs off. You're just going to go in to gut out anything that's rotten and that's corroded. And you're going to paint over it. You're going to lay the wood. And I only know this thanks to my uncle, pastor, elder, Frank Bass. <laughs> yes, it was our summer jobs. When we was here, we had to help rehab homes here in East St. Louis and St. Louis. And everybody had to participate. That was the village. Right. And unfortunately, we don't have that much anymore. Um, and now he's a pastor now, and he's still teaching the youth and young men, old and young, how to build homes, how to take care of their homes was the same way with our bodies. Everything that seems like that man made, we made in the like image of our bodies, including the cars. The process is still the same. If you can get an oil change, then you can get your your toxic fluid in your body flush. We call colon they call colon cleanse. It's called hydrocolon cleanses now. It's not popular here in East St. Louis and in these areas. However, if you Google, you will find that there are some that practice it and you will come out feeling anew, like the scripture stated. You will come out feeling whole neat. But then the, the trick is, is knowing what foods to eat. And unfortunately, that's a sad thing that we consider that a trick. But it's only because Satan has taken the original foods and medicines of God and the original herbs. And now they've turned it into a, what we call genetically modified foods. Which mm -hmm. you know the abbreviation of it to be GMO foods. Right, right, right. And so. Well, I wanted third John. One and two, first, uh, third John, the first chapter and the second verse says, Brother, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health. He wants you to have money. He wants you to be blessed. Mm -hmm. But he, he turned right around and said, what's the good of having all this money and you see <laughs> I'm gonna get a house to Jerry and get a car <laughs> yeah, to uh, point. No, he wants you to have money, but he wants you to be in good health. Am I correct? That's correct. Now, I wanted, Pastor Coleman, could you give us some piggyback on, she did an excellent job, uh, what you heard and tell me what you're thinking on that. Well, first of all, she did do an excellent job. But for me, okay, I'm kind of stuck on all things are good for those that believe in God. I believe that individuals need to learn to process those things that they are doing or using or feeding on how those things can be used for their good. So, like I said, I heard someone, <laughs> all things, <laughs> all things are for the good of the believers. think about that. You know, that. That just kind of be with me. I hear people say that. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't or should be poor. I hear that. Thank you. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, Jesus went to a country where they were all poor. <laughs> people hate you know, and uh oh, I missed it. And he healed the he healed the 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 the, the devil out of the grave. And, 
the, the man that was living in the grave, he healed him, you know, and sent the devils out of me. And Jesus turned right around and put him back in the same situation. Told him to, that the guy said, well, you know, I want to go with you. But the Lord said, no, you go home and tell your friend. Oh. Mm -hmm. And what a good thing that the Lord has done for you. And then later, like I said, when we look in the uh, in Acts, you know, where uh, I, I believe it was Peter that, you know, the cloth or whatever it was come down from heaven and told him to rise and eat. And Peter was saying, well, you know, not so, Lord. I, I've never eaten any unclean thing. Mm. But see, that which God has cleansed. <laughs> Don't call that common. You know. So, there's some, I believe what was happening there. That's my belief. You know. I believe what was happening there is that Christ, Christ knew and understood that when he, to include everybody in the world as he said, everybody, he knows some of those places uh, you go to don't have state. <laughs> You know, yeah, some of them places, some people living out there, you know, they, they don't have meat and stuff to eat from. They, some folks eat insects and, mm -hmm. and all those different things and whatever. Mm -hmm. So, which goes back to the point of all things made for good man. But we need to, with the Spirit of God, we can get an understanding of what good that thing is for. Mm -hmm. it, 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 and it, and this health thing she's talking about, it, it's, it's a good thing that she has an understanding and a lot of us don't, include me, you know, because I can, I can look at certain things and say, well, uh, for me now, in my mind, a maggot has no place of good thing that could be done in medicine. <laughs> but they use it. Right. Maggots. What? Right. They use the maggots to go in and to clean some wound. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. To draw out toxins from the blood. What? Mm -hmm. so are, you, are you serious? Yeah. But very strategically, they don't just leave But God it. said all things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> made for the so, you know, I, I like that. I just think it's a good <laughs> I think that's a good point. And um, I had to, what came to mind with the scripture Proverbs um, 3 5 through 8, trusting God's wisdom over your own understanding. And we know where we go with that trust in the law with all that heart and lean not into our own understanding. Proverbs but in all all our ways acknowledge him right. and he says that he will and shall direct our path so now i overall God. think about that when you say that and then when you say that all things were made he was speaking of the things that he made he never included what mankind made what he made. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. What he made. If I make dinner for my family. And someone else come in and say, Well, I made dinner too. But yet they fed their family. Who is my who who is my family supposed to thank for making the dinner? Even though the other person made dinner for their family, who are you going to thank for making the dinner in your own home? 
the mother or the father in that home, in that house. Not what somebody else made or prepared for another family because that was not nourishing to your soul. That did not feed your children. And so what we have is that the word that you brought out is true. It's true. In exactly the way it was stated. All things that he made. He never said anything that Satan made. Anything that we played Dr. Frankenstein with and altered. The only one that has done that down throughout history is wicked mankind. Those with demonic mentalities and satanic agendas have taken everything that was good and I think that's scripture too. Right. And he tried to turn it into that that was dark the light has to be dark everything is twisted and if you think about the word wicked one of the definitions means to twist so what goes up must come down they said no it's not up it's down is there a day or there's a night no they say there's a day it's not a night do we need the sun no we don't need the sun we need the moon what we see right there in genesis that god created the sun never gave us permission to take away the sun or to tamper with it and when we saw a man by the name of you know who and he is costing us a mighty bill and I don't think he's entering into the pearly gates the moment we heard that he was messing with that sun all of a sudden it didn't matter who believed in the word of God who believed who created the sun everybody done most people did their research and said wait a minute here we need the sun for daylight what are they doing it wasn't speaking of god the creator the sun has always been there some did dug a little deeper well why do we need the sun outside of light oh the vitamin d what is vitamin d for Vitamin D helps heal the bones. We go to the scriptures, tons of scriptures on can these bones live? <laughs> Take your 37 one. Why is the bone so important? That's so true. We have many people around the world in different tribes that still to this day practice seeing and hearing what they say is the voice of their God through, through, through praying over the bones of their ancestors and somehow people near far rich and poor come to hear and see the gift that God has given them God gave the gift but yet they're using it for their own glory and then that takes us right back to yes we're supposed to be thankful and we are supposed to appreciate all the good things that God made. Okay, I want to interject. I'm a little slow, but I'm for sure. The Catholic priests has molested so many babies. What kind of food was they eating? Help me out, because I'm slow. I told you I'm slow, but I'm for sure. They molested all these children, and they're trying to cover it up, put it, they don't want to sue them, and all that. Could you tell me a little bit, what, what kind of food was they eating? Because I need to know, because the Bible said, when you mess with them children, you might as well have a millstone around your neck and be cast into the sea. Because when you mess with God's children, and said, touch my, my nun, I want to do my problem no harm. You ain't got no business messing with babies. What kind of food was they eating? And in everything. Because <laughs> <laughs> it might have got to their brain or something. That wasn't made from God. It wasn't made from God. It's well also known that there is a practice that they can do where they practice actually um, killing, aborting the babies and drinking of their blood. Drinking blood? What we call vampirism. This is ancient. This is nothing brand new. When they wanted to take on the spirit and the DNA and in their case they believe that it allows them to have longevity I cannot say that it that that is for every Catholic priest but I do know that that is a tradition that I that has been shared with me through one of my clients why is it such a hush hush 
when it comes to Catholic priests and what they what they've done, and they found out that they did do it, and most of them admitted, yes, I got a problem. What? Why is it so hush hush about that? Uh, well, I would think that it would fall into the lines that God allowed Satan to have a certain period of time mm. to roam about and seek who He mm. made mm. the vow. But he's going to be the judge in the end. So they're going to have to stand before God. They're going to give stand an account before of what the very God and the very Bible that they put their hands on and say that they believe in. All Catholic priests, listen to the bishop, listen to the doctor. Look, look at me. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Mr. Priest. You need to repent and tell them families that you're sorry. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't repent, Revelations 20 and 10 says every fake false prophet will be cast into the lake first with the beast and the devil. The angel going to pick you up and throw you to hell. That's what the Bible said. Revelations 20 and 10. If I'm wrong, I'll send you a thousand dollars. I'll cash out. I believe in cash out and cash slap. God said you need to repent and that's why John the Baptist was preaching repent he he gave Jezebel revelations 2 and 20 he gave Jezebel time to repent she refused to repent she was a fornicator she was a beast of allergy that means she laid with animals horses and dogs as long as she got paid Jezebel broke up a lot of churches messing with the pastors hello yeah. Messing with women, it don't matter. Messing with kids, it don't make her no different. As long as she got authority and control. Now let me ask you this about this Jezebel, well, the fornicator and and a bad woman, and, and she dressed provocative. With I look at me, I'm preaching. I'm Solomon. I told my mom, I whoop for name me that. Day. I used to love the women. And, uh, got the tattoo here. And, uh, oh, oh, I just got, ain't none of that gonna move me no more. Cause. That's Jezebel's spirit, and she'll take you to hell. You, I don't care what you put on, you need to go put some clothes on. Janet Jackson, y'all need to go put some clothes on. Beyonce, uh, what's that lady name? Rihanna that worshiped the devil. Rihanna that worshiped the devil. You need to get delivered and repent. Satan has deceived you and gonna take you to hell. Look how Dr. Dr. Uh, Hill is dressed, modest. Everything is covered. God wants us to dress modest. He wants the ladies to look modest. He don't want you tempting me like Jezebel. The spirit of Jezebel is on a lot of women and a lot of men. Ain't on me. She ain't taking me to hell. I don't, look, sweet. I don't care how fine you is. You ain't getting my money. <laughs> you ain't gonna get a dime from me. Eh? See that? You support it, then it grows. Right. Yeah. Now, how do you feel about the man? I got, I'm gonna get close out now. How do you feel about the man being the head of his wife and taking over and ruling her and telling her, sweetie, we cannot do this and you don't tell me what to do. I'm a man going to tell me what to do. See, well, you don't need to be married. Come on. And it's not supposed to be about a feeling first and foremost. Okay. Because we're talking about the Word of God and those who say that they are believers in the Word of God and that we're not just readers but also doers. Hello. Then I would think that the word still stands that that's exactly the order that we were supposed to be doing, it, that we were supposed to live by in the Bible. Now, is he talking about obeying a God fearing, Holy Ghost filled man or just any man? A God fearing man who made you, you all in his like image. There you go. Mm -hmm. So we just ain't talking about, matter of fact, you, you, I got a book out to teach you who you should date and who you should talk to and all that kind of stuff called God's love for your mate five ways to find out if your mate love you or if they're playing games y'all need to get my book I can't get her because I know the five things that God says she's supposed to be doing if she ain't doing them she can't be with me and she can't lie because he can't a liar cannot tarry in his sight so I got the five steps to find out if a person love you or if they're playing games and if you ain't doing them five you ain't marrying me because God said if she don't do this not to marry her now I'm gonna tell you what kind of woman that a man should marry. Y'all ready from the doctor? This is what Jesus said. In 1 Peter 3, 4. She must have a quiet 
and gentle spirit that reference her husband. She don't tell her husband, well, get over there and sit down and shut up. Well, you won't be marrying me. Because the Bible says in Proverbs 21, 9, that it's better for a man to be on the rooftop than to be in a house with an angry woman. I can't Amen. hear you. I, I'm listening. Amen. Oh. <laughs> why is there so much divorce in in Hollywood? Tell me why. Well, you said in Hollywood. I mean, well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> Did you hear that call when she said Hollywood? Hollywood. <laughs> uh, because they, they are of their father. Ooh. So they, they obey and say. They are right. The scripture said that the sinner be the sin. Why am I going over this? We're trying to save y'all from a headache. I have so much peace in my life from following the Bible. I can't do it, but I sure want to say it. That's how much peace I got. The devil, I'm not going to give him no place. And don't go to sleep on the devil. Because he'll show you something. That's why the Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 8. The devil walking like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may be found. He said, be vigilant. Be awake. Because if you go to sleep, the devil will show you something. He'll wake you up and you'll wonder what happened. No, I'm gonna call Bill Cosby and talk to him about that. Then watch and pray. What you say? Watch and pray. Watch as well as pray. Now, they're all about this. See, we got to talk about it because I don't know about y'all. You other preachers scared to talk about it because you don't want to lose your members. I ain't right. concerned about. I'm, 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 I'm in it for the outcome, not the income. Mm -hmm. I'm in it for the outcome that somebody got saved, somebody got okay. delivered, Amen. somebody is set free. That's Amen. what pleased God and me. It's not about money with me. I have businesses. I'm going to make money. Don't, I don't use and pimp the members. Uh, Hallelujah. Say it again. Don't say want it again. your money. Only money I want, God want from you is tithe and you pay your offering. I'm good. As long as you take care of God, he'll take care of you. How many know if you take care of God's business, he'll take care of you? Amen. That's he right. shall supply your needs. It's not about money with me. I got God is my money. I think I got plenty of it because I got God. Mm -hmm. I, Amen. I didn't hear Amen. you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We got to teach the people the truth. Right. And the truth shall make you free. St. John 8.32 I put out a thousand dollar it is still standing today. That go for you bishop. That go for you apostle. That go for you uh, whoever you are. One thousand dollars I will cash up it to you if you can find me a woman in the Bible that the prophet Samuel ordained to lead a man, woman, and child. I will give you a thousand dollars. He ain't never called no woman. St. John 3 and 34 said he only called a man. Jesus says Luke 4 and 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. What was he, a woman or a man? I can't hear you. I, I didn't hear you, sweetie. Okay, he was a man. God called 12 disciples. How many were women? None. I speak up, honey. Zero. Oh, okay. <laughs> he want me in the lead. We allow, because of the authority God gives us, we allow women to do. But really, mm -hmm. uh, if you go to 2 Timothy mm -hmm, 2 12, it said, I, I, I don't even want her to teach. You know, he wants her to keep silent in the church. And what we try to tell you, you may allow it, but God is saying, I need them. This is the order of God. You correct me if I'm wrong. Dr. Chef, I'm asking you to correct me if I'm wrong. The order of God, Jesus, the man, the woman, and then the children. Yes, sir. That's the order of God. But it's all out of, Duncan, it's all out of messed up. These kids is running. Yeah. Telling mom and dad, do, do mom and dad is scared of the children. Right, right. Am I right, Colin? Well, maybe they took a line that scripture said, and the child should lead the way. Not the author of confusion, but I think that might be what's happening. That is correct. So my point is, we that's teach. So what you say, the producer? No, that's not leading with this one. <laughs> no. They lead the way, way, but it ain't God's way. <laughs> I don't think it was in that that was in that context because the um, the um, children we see now, now we ask for good children last time we put our mind on the bad ones all the time. Mm -hmm. We ask for real good ones, but the um, 
they can't read and they don't have anything. Mm -hmm. so, you know, and, and, and then, Duncan, the children, uh, now, now Coleman, mm -hmm. Dr. Coleman, Dr. Q, y'all got to jump in on this one, because I'm, I'm going to go somewhere, y'all going to be mad at me, and I really don't care, because I'm going to get me some sleep, because Jesus told me to say it. The children are confused, Dr. Chef, because you got two men married because of the laws of the land. Romans 13, 1, we're supposed to abide by them. That don't mean I agree with them. Two men getting got married and the children confused. The devil is the author. And it, Dr. Hugh, this made me so mad. My eyes got red and I was about to throw up. I was watching a uh, 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 Facebook and they got this guy in Atlanta, they got a church, two men married, and one of them is the first man. Now God ain't in that. Talk to me, Dr. Q. The first man? The first man. Have mercy. Have mercy. So sad. And I, I just, uh, and I just love my husband. Come on, talk to me, Q. In the beginning, uh -oh. God created Come on, you. male Ooh. and female. Uh -oh. That is called the dialectical law of opposite. Come on, Dr. Mm -hmm. Hugh. If you have wetness, you must have brightness. When it comes to a car, the battery Start the, starts the car off from a negative post and a positive post. Yes. Come on, Dr. Keith. Yes. Um, when it comes to even appliances, when you hook up your gas line range oven, you got to have a male and female in mm -hmm. in order for your gas to pass through. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I often ask people <laughs> that believe in the same sex relationship. Okay. How did you get here? Mm -hmm. Through mama and daddy, mm -hmm. or a man and a woman, woman right. mm -hmm. and through sexual insemination, mm -hmm. the egg was fertilized mm -hmm. by the male. True. No two of the same can produce a mm -hmm. child. That's correct, sir. Because Washington D.C. passed it as law. We have to check with God's law. And all of these uh, laws and man-made laws, uh, we have to stand before God. Mm -hmm. and we do not go with who is right. Right. But we go with what is right. That is correct, sir. Brooke Holman, what well, you think about that, that? That man married to that man, he's the first man at the church. Well, <laughs> uh -oh. I don't think about that. That's oh, why? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. First thing, but let me say this on the whole, okay. the whole issue. Okay. Given. Um, when Jesus walked this earth, okay. there was no man, no woman that he wouldn't talk to. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. See, had nothing against, but you know, a, well, I don't know what he had against that. Let me, let me go back. Okay. Retract that. But, Christ talked to everybody. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And I don't recall anywhere where he put anybody down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? Didn't take anything from anybody. Right. Right. You know, you put the law down, you know, and pass that on. Now you can live it or you don't. <laughs> That's right. That's it. See? 
So now we're here in this place. Mm -hmm. See? And it's not incumbent on me to now go beyond what Christ did. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. See? I need to live my life, you know. Uh, many of those people never done anything to me. <laughs> See? I need to live my life as Christ lived his life. You know, he didn't parade up and down the street and, you know, and when, a, you know, a, this group ain't this and that group ain't that. He just told you who was a hypocrite and what they were doing <laughs> wrong. And you, now, hey, after he did that, uh -oh. that's on the people. We're not trying, you know, you are who you are. And I say that to anybody. They are who they are. Mm -hmm. Now I don't, I don't go along with uh, 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 all this uh, uh, teaching it in the schools and this, that, and other. And I don't go along with it simply because of this. Okay, I'm listening. When I grew up, uh -oh. right out there in the South End, you know, I can't remember a lesson where the teacher taught the class about my mom and daddy. We didn't have no class like that. Right. See, and the other thing is, you know, if you said something about my daddy down there, the thing, mm -hmm. he would probably be down there and, 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 and ask you, what do you know about me? Right. Mm -hmm. See, you cannot, or we should not, you know, be jumping out in front and, and teaching kids all about, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. their parents. Yeah. And the reason I'm saying that is because they get that lesson every day. Yeah. When they go home, they're going home to whoever their parents are. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going home to that. They're going home to even, if it's two men, two women, a man and woman. They're going home to that, so that's no reason to teach that. Mm -hmm. The thing to teach is mm -hmm. what God said about uh -oh. that. Uh -oh. And be through with that as Christ did. Mm. But, 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 but the problem is, and y'all correct, all y'all, everybody can correct me if I'm wrong. The problem is, is when you took Jesus out of it, that's when all the folks start getting killed in school. Let me ask somebody. Okay, well, I'm, when you take Jesus out but, of something, what happens? But I'm not speaking of taking Jesus <laughs> out. I'm, I'm speaking, see, that's why I tell everybody okay. that. It's simple for me because I am just a servant of the living and most high God. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. See? And whatever it is that he wants me to do, that I will do. That's beautiful. You know, and then when I look at what Christ did and the people he, he spoke with, look at him uh, talking to the woman at the well. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See? You, you know, he, you know, and, 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 and what did he do about the, the, the woman when when, when the, uh, uh, the, the the religious leaders brought the woman and said, well, you know, we caught her in the very eye. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What did he do about that? You tell him, he that, uh, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. See, he, he, he did not, he did not jump them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, what? She did what? Mm -hmm. So... So, Pastor Cole, all I'm saying is to whoever doing what, and I could not be wrong because Jesus said, repent. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, well, you that's know, not the uh, uh, issue. Uh, um, apologies. What, what you say? No, I was speaking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted to, to allow them to finish okay. what they were saying. Is, is, the, is the church to preach against transgender sexual change in yourself from what deep down in your DNA your bone. Mm -hmm. Is is the church to speak and preach against it or just go along with it? Well, whoa, whoa. Uh -oh. you know, what I'm, what I'm getting at here is saying simply this. What did Christ say? What did Christ do? Let him be your God. 
Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I believe it's in Matthew. It's, it, it's in Matthew, I, I believe, chapter 19 or what have you, when Christ was talking to him about the eunuch. Now, the eunuch is a male that don't have testicles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what the eunuch is. A male that don't have testicles. Going back to let the sinner be the sinner, let the eunuch be the And when he, what he said to him was simply this. He said, well, he didn't go against anything. What he said was, you know, uh, some people are eunuchs because they were born eunuchs. Yeah, yeah. Then he went on to say that some people were uh, 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 made units by men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then he also went on to say <laughs> there are some units uh -oh. that made themselves units so they can better serve God. Mm -hmm. Oh, he in the word. He in the word. We don't now, know. Listen, oh, oh, now, wait a minute. Well, well, so, hold up. But hold up. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm trying to come out of the stall now. So that they can better serve God. Ooh, God. That's right. Okay. Listen, y'all. Unfortunately, that's not the reason why some are removing their testicles today. Well, but so I, that but, does apply. But I ain't got nothing to do with work. that. I ain't got nothing to do with that. He, he gave a list of, of those people that did whatever it was and who did it. My thing here is this. We, if we're God-fearing people, we must do as Christ did. He was the living example. The one thing we have today that they didn't, one thing that went on today that didn't go on then, we now have laws that's telling the church what, what the church needs to do. Since that back then the, the leaders, the church leaders brought it. And now we have laws trying to tell the church what to do, like they're trying to change the doctrine, tell the church what to have as their doctrine. Now, one way, one way I would tell them is that um, the two people of the same sex want to marry, and the court, is, is, uh, the court affirms the law, let them go to the courthouse and get married. Mm -hmm. And quit trying to come to the church and tell the church what to do. And, and you, but when you get the situations here again, what we are supposed to be doing is Jesus said this, and this is how he handled these situations. So I'm through with that. I have nothing for me to do. I'm saying when the when the when they come and tell the church what to do, they're trying to tell the church what to do. They're trying to sue people who won't marry those people. No freedom. I got a good attorney. They're throwing out the case. No, no, they can't sue the church. So they can sue the like the cake makers and all, but they can't sue the church because they have to have the separation of church and state. Let me see. According to the law. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come I, I out just like read one on that, and that was the fear at first, even though we're not supposed to be fearing nobody but the Lord, and this is for the believers okay. uh, in that scripture. Um, we're not supposed to fear no man. I'm not saying and so, fear, if, you know. so, so, no, I'm not stating that. I'm saying I have noticed that that is part of the reason why a lot of leaders, spiritual, religious leaders, don't want to touch on it now that. Um, many have gone towards Congress to try to see could they get the laws to change in the favor of those who's wrestling with that. But there was just a case where the Supreme Court overturned a, a young man that was trying to sue um, a pastor for that. And the reason why they said that they threw it out was because they thought about it. If if they go in and make someone that believes in their own religion teaching and doctrine force them to do something that's against what they believe then that means that it gives the listen to it, it gives the christian the right or another believer the right to go and force them to do what they want them to do and so all praises be to god i saw that as a balance and common sense being made so I don't think that that's too much an issue but if I may go right back to what um, Mr. Quarles was stating he asked should the church teach it that's where my brain has been stopped right there um, 
it made me think of the question to ask if it's in the word of God and man say that you are a servant of God a believer in God's word then you are supposed to teach everything that God wants you to teach Hello. in this word Hello. without fear and trembling right. Bible. no devil on As this earth Christ did. or no one that's confused about whether or not they are a man or woman should be able to have control we're talking about the sinner man and we're talking about those who say that I've been called by God when he say many are called few are chosen. but few are chosen this is what makes me focus more so on the few the harvest is plenty a lot of us doing ministry and working and preaching and teaching and proper lying <laughs> what they're doing proper lying <laughs> But few are chosen. <coughs> so this is where I believe that we are seeing, just like we saw with COVID, where there was no healing, no more laying, no more power of the Holy Ghost being used because of our leaders and ourselves were sick ourselves for the most part. Then this is where we denounce God. This is where people lose faith in the word of God when they don't see us operating in the Holy Spirit to exercise the gifts from God to heal the land. This is how they have grown to know who is the true children of light versus the children of darkness. Beautiful. Who is the true prophets of God versus who are the false prophets of God. Now that does not mean that every prophet or every pastor would have the gift of healing but that is part of the fivefold ministries that we are supposed to ask God to provide us when we take on membership. Mm. There's a member, your body, you become a member. There are members. That's right. Five. And the church is used as a ship. Right. And we say we want to have fellowship right. Right. with one another. Right. Right. Forsake not ourselves. This is for to Bible. assemble together. Bible. Bible. But if there is no Holy Spirit present, there is no healing in the sanctuary. There is no gifts of God That's being right. exercised. That's then right. He tells us and shows us what He did when we didn't use the gifts of God. He would say that we would come before him even for those who exercised the gifts that took credit for it that said what they wasn't going to say that many would come to me and say in the last days that i healed in your name i taught in your name i preached in your name but in the end he would judge it and he would say depart from me you worker of iniquity you worker of sin i knew you not because of what your heart Heart mean mind. I, I, I teach this from the body. The heart cannot, if the heart is not able to pump blood, meaning pump oxygen, through to the brain, you are considered brain dead. Right. Meaning you cannot think right. You are not considered conscious minded. You are not awake. So when the scriptures speak of the heart, he would judge the heart my understanding from the natural is that he was relaying he was speaking of he wouldn't he he said your minds were far from me mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. i knew mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. meaning there was no relationship with him and so when i think of all of these things that we are saying when it comes down to, to satanic and twisted and wicked thoughts changing the natural order of God mm -hmm. from male, woman, and child, but God first, then I am confused and we know who the author well, of confusion, confusion is. Right. Now let me let me pick it back. About how it is that we're supposed to be afraid to speak upon the natural order of God and we say that we are the children of God. Now let me let me let me speak on him because he said just Jesus is laser law and that's it I concur with it now you ask the question can I teach it now listen to this y'all listen to me listen to me the Holy Ghost 
speaks through me. Luke 12 and 12. And the hour that you speak, I will give you the words to say. Speak, Holy Ghost. Deuteronomy 23 and 1. If you cut off your private area, you cannot enter into heaven. How can we hear without a preacher? I'm preaching. If you cut your private area off, Deuteronomy 23 and 1, you cannot go to heaven. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. No fornicator, adulteress, or homosexual shall enter into heaven. Judge Jesus, not Judge Judy. 1 yeah. Corinthians 6 and 9. You're going to hell and burn if you don't repent. That's what I preach. Sound, Doc. Stop playing with folks' soul. Don't come here trying to play with folks' soul. Tell them the truth. Be real with them. And God will hold you accountable for not telling them 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Now, if it ain't in there, I'll send you a $1,000 cash out or cash left. I preach the truth. John 8, 32, you should know the truth, and the truth shall do what? Set you free. Make you free. He's going to make you all over again. I'm telling you the truth. I'm going to preach like John the Baptist did. You know, they cut his head off because he yeah. told the truth. See, don't come. You, you can't come here. I'm going to sing you out. <laughs> the truth will make us free. No homosexual, no fornicator, no adulterous, no witchcraft person shall enter into heaven. It's in the book. We can't leave. Well, why are we not teaching that, Duncan? We can't leave our line. Some people just gotta turn them over. <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah. We left our line. So no, line. Uh, Mr. Qual, Dr. Qual, uh -huh. you need to teach the truth. Yes. Whether right. they want to hear it or not. Mm -hmm. right. And like Burke Holman said, lay it out there, leave it alone. That's it. You right. plant the seed, God will That's bring it. the sunshine and rain. I <laughs> preach the truth and let you read it for your. Yeah. Well, one thing that happened in, in the black churches. Uh, um, for a long time, the church was an incubator for homosexuals. And when I was a kid, the only time you do anything about somebody being a homosexual was when you went to church. That still is the case. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, we didn't know nothing about it. No, you did. Yeah, we, we, when you went to church, that's when you, and we let it, we, because they were the good singers and the music. Well, but they'll be, what you have to look at on that is, uh, because you go to church, that don't mean Satan ain't up in there. Right we, there, we, amen. We, you know what the problem with that is? That's right. In the early church, so they got laid. Yep. In the early church, right. they right. lived right. in like communes. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, sinners wasn't allowed in the congregation. What happened? They went out there evangelized. Mm. And when you became a believer, they brought you in. Ooh. But now, we done got lazy about evangelizing. We want them to come. Good Everybody point. come on and come at you. Just talk about that. <laughs> wow. And, 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 and now, we got sinners in the congregation That's of God. That's a good point. And now, yes. we allow anything. Yes. We allow, we're christening bastard children Ooh. in God's house. I mean, Ooh. Ooh. She, she, she can have, she sit on the front seat. Got a baby about three different men then ready, got another one on the way. And and then he sits there bring come without and brag about the baby he's got and he's sitting in the pool kid. Cause I know I know some people I know some people yeah, um, know some. I think yeah. church in St. Louis. The pastor's brother making babies all over the place. Who said Eli when he was killed but allowed his sons to fornicate in the house of God? But we allow all of this to go on and then when people do hear sound doctrine. They get up and say, I'm, 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 I'm getting away from that. First wow. Samuel 15, wow. 23. Rebellion is a form of witchcraft. When you rebel against the man of God or the woman of God that's preaching the truth, you're practicing witchcraft when you can't do what the pastor tell you to do. When no child, when them children is disobedient to them parents, they practice some witchcraft. It's in your Bible, first Samuel 15, 23. If it ain't in there, I'll cash it after you or cash out. God wants us to come as we are, but you Bible. cannot stay as yeah, you are. Oh, how about that? How about that? I know about they said that God has a, um, I'm going to say. Romans 12. Be ye not caught. Form. That's it, brother. Ooh, there you That's go. But be ye transformed. You're correct, sir. After you have been informed, mm. so you can train for God That's it. perform. That's it, brother. And That's you can it. be transformed into Him. 
2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new, new creature. All yeah. things, fornicating lines, yeah, passed away, all things become new. new. When Christ touched your life, you're going to change. That's right. That's it. When you have Amen. a relationship with him, things change. Amen. Okay, um, I think this got hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, fan, oh, oh, fan that fire, fan that fire. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they don't do this. That's why I have the sound doctor TV show. And now my producer, we're going to set it up while I'm on the radio. You ain't hear nothing like this because... Oh, let me talk to these preachers. Oh, oh. If you're scared to tell the truth, get it. Show out of the pulpit. <laughs> get out of the pulpit and stop trying to get money and tell the people the truth and stop grinning with it. Because God going to judge you. God going to judge you. I'm talking to you, you cheap preacher that just take off. The Bible said they will even pay somebody to teach them a lie. Yeah. And these churches are getting people to teach them a lie so they can continue to sin. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, have, I stay away from sin because it costs. Now let right. me ask you this question. Let me ask y'all this question. Duncan, it go for you too. Do sin cost money? <laughs> Somebody got to buy that dope. More. Somebody got to buy that weed. Costs you You more. even got to get a hotel to be with them. I'm sorry, I'm preaching. The scripture <laughs> says that the wages of sin. What? The wages. Romans 6, 23. W-A-G-E-S. Yeah. The wages of sin. Oh my God. Is death. But the gifts of God is eternal, eternal life. life. There is a wage. There is a cost. Because we've been bought with a cost. Stay away from sin. James 4, 7. Resist the devil and he'll run from you. But you got to submit yourself to God first. When you submit yourself to God. Submitting is the same. I don't want to. But I have to. When you submit to God and then resist the devil. The Bible said he will run from you. He gone. Georgia and Florida. <laughs> Am I telling the truth, y'all? Right, right. Sound doctor Jesus Christ, Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey. Ooh. Let me talk to you. Mm. You gonna come telling us it's get it, you get to heaven anyway. That's a lie. Mm. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the, way, the truth, and the life. There's only one way to heaven. J-E-S-U-S. -S. Muslim. J-E-S-U-S. -S. When you get up there and you see him, he going to say, now wait a minute, the preacher told you on you, all is going to be seen. Because the Bible says, nothing shall be hid. He going to show all of this. The preacher told you, but you you follow somebody else. Jesus is the only way to heaven. Am I right or wrong? You're right. Am I right, Duncan? That's what the word says. Am I right, Dr. Q? Yeah, you're right. Am I right, Dr. Right. Right. If you don't have Jesus, if you don't have Jesus, I'll tell you what. Don't accept Jesus, but don't die. Because when every... Now, I'm going to tell y'all this. Nobody told y'all this since y'all been black. Or whatever we'll call you. <laughs> Everybody gets to go to heaven. Well, who's staying? Because you got to stand before God. The scripture says that hell has enlarged herself. Everybody gets to go, but who's staying? Because you got to be judged. And then hell has enlarged itself. Well, she just told you. In verse uh, uh, Isaiah 5, she's telling you that it's so, ain't got enough room to put the souls in hell. And her mouth has enlarged, so it has no measure. God right. almighty, Isaiah 5, 14. Every time we talk, we can tell you what the scripture is. Hell has enlarged itself, you ain't got enough room to put the souls in there? That means some Christians ain't messed up. Shut up, brother. There you go. The great falling away. You better repent. I'm telling you what to do. I'm giving you the answer. See, it'd be, it'd be something we just bashing. We're not bashing. We're telling you what Jesus said. Now, I'm doing what Colby said. Put it out there what Jesus said. Back up and leave it alone. They're going to make. They're gonna do what they want to do anyway. Right. We are trying to help you get into heaven. My whole thing is to help you come out of what you and get out of that sinful. Leave that mad man alone. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Put your TV on real good. No, no, don't, don't you shut the door. Leave that married man or that married woman alone. You're on your way with gasoline on you to hell. You got to get delivered and set free. That's sound doctrine. Nobody preaching that. Yeah. Nobody preaching yeah. heaven and hell. Now, the question I want to ask all y'all since y'all in here. Where are you going? I'm striving for perfection with the heaven. Where are you going, Duncan? <laughs> Where are you going, Dr. Q? Heaven. Heaven. 
<laughs> Pastor uh, Coleman, where you going? Jesus Christ. Jesus Lord. <laughs> Saint John five twenty eight. And the Lord shall speak to the graves, and everybody in the graves, the angel shall bring them forth. They shall go stand before God. And this is what he's going to say to the Christians that were that suffered with him on earth. When you suffer with him, you reign with him. This is what he's going to say. You're going to be like a McDonald's hamburger. Well done. You mean a McDouble's hamburger. McDouble. I'm oh, sorry. Well done. <laughs> thy good and faithful what? Servant. Enter into thy joy. That's, that's your judgment. But the, but the one that disobeyed God, that did what they wanted to do, can't tell me nothing about it. Okay. You get up there with the angel. He's going to say, depart from me. Mm -hmm. Ye cursed into everlasting fire. Matthew 25, 41. It's in the Bible. You don't believe it? I cash out your cash out Depart from me. Ye cursed into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. And then you go to hell. Everybody. Revelations 20 and 11. I saw the dead. Small and great. Small. It's Johnny Johnson. You don't know him. Great. Jay-Z. Beyonce. Mary J. Blige. Those are great people, right? They got to stand before God. He going to judge them. Revelations 20 and 11. Y'all better... I'm trying to tell y'all, I want them saved. I want JC saved. I want Beyonce saved. Mm -hmm. I want Mary J. Blige saved because I love them that much. If I ever get in their presence, I'm the only preacher. First thing I'm going to tell you, I don't want your money. I don't want nothing to do with your money. You can keep your money. But guess what? You better give your life to the Lord before it's too late. Because y'all know as well as I know. Y'all help me out now. They are selling their souls to the devil. Because yeah. mm -hmm. somebody talk about that before we close the show out. Yeah. Why are they selling their souls to the devil? Please, somebody talk about because, it. Don't be scared now. Because of money. Is the root? Money, power, fame. Uh, you do not rise in Hollywood to the level that these stars are without Satan not wanting anything in return. Um, I have a list of many movie stars, rappers, that do not believe God exists. What? Right. I have a list of That's them. True. That's true. In Hollywood. Mm -hmm. That we call Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> yes. They do. They. They. Print. When you when you on award nights, when you hear these yeah, I saw that. stars get up and yeah. say, I want to thank God. I ask myself, what's the God on there God. referencing? The little God. It is that small G God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not the big G. Right. Not God the Father, but the God of this world. That is the God that there is serving because the God of this world gives them all of the sex they want, right. all the of the money they want, mm -hmm. all of the weed they want, mm -hmm. all of the women and men they want, all of the alcohol that they want, the God of this world. The, the lust of the eye, the, the lust, lust of, of the, the flesh, flesh and, and the, the pride, pride of, of life is not of the mm -hmm. Father, but of the world. Mm -hmm. And 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 they tell you in their rap music, in their songs, that they serve Satan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. But the Bible says in First John two and fifteen, Pastor. Love not the world, neither, neither the things that, that are in, in the world. world. For all yes. that is in the world, mm -hmm. the lust of the flesh, uh -huh. the lust of the eyes, uh -huh. and the pride of life, all of that goes back. It authenticates Genesis 1 and the Garden of Eden. Right there. The lust of the flesh, mm -hmm. the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Satan introduced all three 
to brother Adam and sister Eve. By using what for the flesh? That fruit. There we go, the forbidden fruit. The, the forbidden mm. tree. It still started with the food, with the flesh. Yeah, all of the other things you can eat uh -huh. that you may live, but mm -hmm. the tree in the midst, in the middle, mm -hmm. do not eat. For the day that you eat, you will surely die. But, but the mm -hmm. death, the death, the dying was not a physical death. It was both. And eventually they died spiritually mm -hmm. and physically they will eventually die. Mm -hmm. so, they yeah. needed, so they needed the same. Because we went from living yeah. to the ages of Methuselah, 300, 900 years. Where are we at, at now? 40, no. <laughs> I know, yeah, you're right. You can expect a heart attack. You got kids in the nursing home right now. 13, 13, 30. Exactly. So yes, we have died spiritually and naturally, yeah. which to both is one. You can't have one without the other. Right. And they are eating the forbidden fruit. They yeah. are eating that because what was enticing to me that I heard with that scripture when I thought about the Garden of Eden is that he said he knows when the Satan spoke to him and said he knows that the day you eat of this tree, you will become like him and so that's the reason why we have the little gods wanting to lord and be like him right. they sing everything about the sun the moon the stars and i am god jay-z alone remember what he calls himself jehovah mm. <laughs> what, yeah. what, 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 Dr. Okay. Chef, I want you, we get ready to close out, I want you to give, you, so he can put it on screen, your information where people can order your all natural products and uh, tell them some of the things you're getting ready to do. We'd like to hear. Okay, uh, you all can reach me at 618-388-8100 if you'd like to purchase any orders of original natural healing herbs and colon purifier cleansers to get your bodies back on track at www.drchef d-r-c-h-e-f health and wellness at gmail.com you can also take and call in for those who want direct this is mostly for um, spiritual leaders and those who will uh, work in the health field at 314 seven zero five six two six four you can also email me at help coach f e f e at gmail dot com as well i do do free consultations for upon those who purchase or that would like to start healing the body the temples that god has given us so that we can live a more longer and healthier life like he had promised us that we should prosper and be in good health Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We are. Let's give her a round of applause for coming in, Dr. Steph, helping our people uh, live a more healthier lifestyle. And I want to thank my guests who are very powerful and were strong on what they said. Uh, Pastor Roland Coleman and then Dr. JQ. Give them a round of applause. Thank y'all because you all were accurate and you are coming straight yes. from the Bible. Everything we say on this Sound Doctor TV show is in the Bible, and, and we let you read it for yourself. Now, this Wednesday at the Union Full Gospel Bible Church, 2402 Tudor Avenue. Let me recapitulate. 2402 Tudor Avenue, East St. Louis, Illinois, 62207. We are teaching this Wednesday at 6 o'clock. 666 six, six, the tribulation the battle of Armageddon when God fights the devil you're going to have all those scriptures we're going to talk about what's going on right now at the White House working with this stuff that's going on you need to come to our church my members are so sharp they can tell me where the scriptures are he is on 666 I want you to know if you take the mark of the beast you're going to hell 
I don't want anybody to see that. I'm going to do not take the mark of the beast on your forehead or your right hand. 666. We're going to go over all those scriptures and we're going to have a mic up there where you can come ask questions and then we're going to answer you from Jesus. Anybody? I'm talking to your old witness now. Look at me real good. I had one come to my house this week and I said, ma'am, I can't let you in my house. She said, why? I said, second John 1 and 10 says, if anybody do not bring the doctrine of Jesus Christ, mm. do not receive them into your house. Mm. If it ain't in our cash app, your cash app. <laughs> you don't suppose to let people into your house that don't bring Jesus Christ. Mm. Don't tell them try to change it to Jehovah. You, that's Antichrist. You're trying to leave Christ out. The only way you can get to heaven is not Jehovah. It is Jehovah Jireh, which is Jesus. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Anybody Antichrist that don't want to acknowledge Christ, if they don't repent and turn around, Revelation 20 and 10 says, they shall be cast into the lake of fire for not receiving Jesus. Now, I didn't write that, Revelation 20 and 15. Read it for your sound doctrine TV show. Dr. Solomon Butler, I teach the truth, I live the truth. I just don't talk it, I want it. So, again, we want to thank all of our guests and... Put the camera back on. Dr. Q is on every Wednesday and every Sunday. What time Sundays? 9 o'clock. Say that again. Dr. Q is on every Sunday and Wednesday uh, on uh, uh, Facebook live. 9 o'clock Sunday morning from 9 to 9.30. Wednesday night 7 to 7.30. You got to hear it. Facebook you. live. You got to hear it. And... Pastor Coleman is open up, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's bread. Breaking of the bread. Huh? The breaking of the bread. The breaking of the bread food. Where he has a truck and he goes and food and everything. And uh, that is just about, we're just about finished with everything. And Brett Coleman, before we go, tell us a little bit about that, what you're doing. Well, basically we're trying to reach out, uh, especially to those individuals or military have groups, you know, just don't have access to things and whatnot in your stores and, and whatnot has left the area or what have you, you know. So you got many places like a senior citizen building, you may not be able to get down to a restaurant for right. yeah. But you know, the restaurant can come to you at mm. your church, you, you know, at your job, you mm. know, at the mm. job, you know, the, the, the restaurant can come to you. It's a full kitchen. Oh, you. All right. Thank you, my guests and everybody. Oh, by the way, thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for being in this room. He said, well, two or three are gathered in my name. There I will be in the midst. Now, I got to pray with you. Listen to me. I don't want to see you go to hell. Hell was not made for you. It was made for the devil and his angels that got kicked out of heaven. He's down here now. But I got authority over him. He do what I say. I'm pimping the devil. I tell him to sit down. He sit down. He don't come over my feet. Because I got authority that he gave me. According to Luke 9 and 1. He gave me authority over every demonic demon. And he gave us the power to cure disease. In the Bible. Luke 9 and 1. Read it for yourself. I'm going to pray with you. You say this with me. You say. Romans 10 9. Those of you who are lost. That are on your way to hell. You know who I'm talking to. You've been struggling and going back and forth and back and forth. You need deliverance. We have healing and deliverance every first Friday of the month at 7 o'clock. We cast demons off of you or we can cast demons out of you. The Holy Ghost does it, not me. And we pray. And matter of fact, you was at the healing and deliverance service. You enjoyed it, didn't you? Mm -hmm. We pray for her. Now, Romans 10, 9, you say this. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. According to that scripture, I am saved. When you sincerely repeat that, you're saved because you confessed it with your mouth. My church, well, I will teach you the word so you can get stronger to fight that devil. Union Full Gospel Bible Church, 2402 Tudor Avenue. East St. Louis, Illinois. My number, 
3966. Jesus said in Matthew 10 22, Solomon, I said, What is it, Lord? You shall be hated because you teach the truth. All you haters, you're welcome to dinner free on me. Why? Luke 6 and 27, Luke 6 and 27 says, Love your enemies. All haters that hate me, call me. I'm going to take you to dinner free on me. <laughs> what preacher doing that? Not too many. I said, Everybody that hate me and don't like me, matter of fact, none got to hate me. Just don't like me. I'm taking you to dinner with me. Have y'all ever heard anything like that? It said, Love your enemies. Bless those. Matter of fact, if you cuss me out right now, guess what I'm going to say to you? Bless you. Because it said, bless those that curse you. Luke 6 and 27. You can't. You throw fire. I throw living water. I put out the fire. Oh, so and so, so and so, so and so. God bless you. <laughs> you so and so, so and so, so. I can't just so and so, so. God bless you. You see, you got a problem. I don't. So whatever I said must have cut you and it hurt you. But it's good that, you, that I was afflicted. God delivered me from fornication. I was a fornicator. I had plenty of women. I don't want none now. I'm a nun and I don't want none. <laughs> Why? Because it'll send me to hell for fornicating. I ain't never tried to talk to you. Talk about, tell me. <laughs> See, you, you were married. So, that's adultery. I can't do that. See, a lot of people don't know that. You don't supposed to mess with a married woman and you don't supposed to mess with a single one. Now, here's the deal. Okay, we can't contain or whatever. First Corinthians 7 and 9, if you can't contain, go get married. I'm going to say, come on, let's go down to the courtroom. You fill out the pay. We can have a, we can have a wedding with the judge. We can have a big wedding later, but we need to get home so we can take our business. That's the way you're supposed to. And I got a friend on here. He's laughing right now because I sent one of my close friends. He said, brother, well, man, we, we can't contain. I told him what to do. He went down to the courthouse. He got married. He know who I'm talking to. He gonna call me tonight. Do what's right. She ain't never gotta worry about me trying to talk to her like that. Cause God hold me responsible for living a holy, clean life. Without holiness, no man shall see God. You gotta let it go. I think you better let it go. Shut up, bubble. Well, well, look at those. <laughs> thank you again, Sound Doctor. Thank you for those who got saved. Call me, 618 410 3966. I'll take you to my church. I'll baptize you if you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking a tongue, according to Acts 238. I, you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking a tongue. I'll take you through all the sessions, and the Holy Ghost will come up on you like they did on the day of Pentecost. I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I speak with tongues, I pray in the Spirit. So if you want to receive that, come see me. I'm real. I don't play with God. And I'm going to call a spade a spade. I'm not going to <laughs> I'm not gonna grin in your face. I'm going to tell you the truth. Because I got to get in the casket one day. And before I get in that <laughs> casket, I'm going to tell the people the truth. Instead of lie to you and make you feel good. Lawrence Duncan. Please get in contact with him. He'll put it on the screen. Yes, he, he do videos. He'll come do a video of your funeral. He'll do a video of marriage. He'll do videos of whatever you want to go. He is the best in the world. And he's also my motion picture uh, uh, producer. He's doing. A, we're going to do a motion picture on Revelation. We'll keep you in touch with that. Thank you all for coming on this show. This was a powerful show tonight because the Holy Ghost spoke through us. Now what you do with it is on you. Be good. Stay good, because everything God made was good. God bless you and keep you. It's my prayer. Yeah.